Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build. Now we're back at the castle of Arendelle to try and complete this birthplace of Anna and Elsa from the movie Frozen. You can see there the reflections in the water with these awesome shaders. Now we've been away from Arendelle for quite some time. I do apologize for that, I've been on vacation. And then when I got back, I was a bit worried because I couldn't find the server. I switched PCs and somewhere in the, in the, in the switching, I thought I'd lost the world, but I managed to track it down. So we're back here where we left off creating the rooftop of the main castle of Arendelle. Now, once I started building this roof, it made me realize just how much of a massive project this actually was. I thought to myself, Arendelle itself is quite a lot smaller than Erebor and Dale, and it wouldn't take me quite so much time. But the truth is, that's just wrong. It's, it's taken me a lot, a lot of time, not just because of the size of the project, but also because it's so close to my heart that I've wanted to make sure that I can do it justice. Now again, you see me here using this retextured nether brick. Now you might think to yourself, well, we're using the texture pack Halcyon Days, and if some of you at home have picked that up and started using it yourselves, why does my nether brick not look this cool shade of cerulean? And that's because I've, mod I've modified this texture pack myself. I customized it slightly just to make the rooftops here the same color as they are in the movie, which is a kind of dark blue, almost green cerulean. Now you see me here just crafting the roof out of these nether brick blocks. Now the way I'm doing this is I'm, I'm building on the left first, building the design around the front and the back, getting that all correct. I'm using about a, a drop of about three blocks by three blocks, staggering down. And I will be changing the edges to nether brick steps in the end, just to, just to round off the roof and make it a little neater. But right now I'm around the back, completing the roof. And once I've got the left side of the roof, what I wanted to do to make my life easier was to literally copy and paste that whole design on the left, flip it 180, and again, there you go, paste it over the other side. Now, once I was happy with, with the main section of roof, I started to reach out with a triangle here. This is, this is one of the roof peaks. Now, if you look at the castle in the movie, there's a lot of roofs and it kind of staggers down and down and down and it's just a really like it's like a like a cascade of roofing it's difficult to describe but um but yeah once i had that first triangle in place i came around to this second peak and what this is going to do around the bottom of the castle is this is going to connect up to the main skirt of the castle so what i did was once i completed this triangle i built around the edge of the castle with this blue nether brick but what doing this made me realize is that it wasn't quite symmetrical. So I had to make a few changes later on that you'll see me do. But again, you see me here building this roof skirting. Now the way this castle is built is it's just, it's so crazy. It's really difficult to wrap your head around it. And when you're building it, when I was building it at least, I had serious troubles maintaining uh, the, the correct kind of perspective and, and sense of scale. Because starting from the top of the castle is cool. But what it means is if you build the roof too big, you don't leave yourself enough space around the bottom. But the reverse is also true. If you start around the bottom and you set yourself a scale, you can work yourself into a corner and realize that you don't have enough room to expand into. So now with most of the roof sections complete, I came around here. Now, the front of the Arendelle Castle is on the left, there's a large window. You see me here building. Now I might come back to the size of this triangle because I think it could be a little bit larger make it a much bigger window. But basically there's a large window on the left and two smaller windows on the right, but they both keep the same height. Now I'm using stone brick here to bridge between the roofing. Now there's also another section of roof skirting, just one layer up from the bottom level of roof. And once I had this window in place, I completed that with again, this blue cerulean nether brick. Now I've just used bricks at the moment, but I will be coming back and replacing those with stairs, so don't worry too much. And now we're on the side here of the castle. Now this is a huge piece of open space. And the problem you have is when you build big, it's really cool because you can add a lot of detail. But another problem is if you don't add much detail or depth, your build can look really flat and dull and pretty drab. So what I'm using here is these are quartz blocks with the new texture pack that I've got. 
And the great thing about this is the quarters just looks like it looks like kind of like a, a kind of a paneling section. But the etched quartz looks like a detailed paneling with wooden planks, which is really cool and, and really kind of fitting for the theme of the Arendelle Castle. Now I'm building a peaked turret roof here out of blue bricks. And then building the support section of that out of wood. But I think I might come back to this and change it out of stone. I'm not quite sure yet. But at least I'm making the walls of this turret section out of stone. And it took me a long time to get the perspective here right and get to get the right shape. When you're building like kind of round curves and spikes and things, it's really easy to build like a pyramid instead of a cone shape. And sometimes that can even look better. So it's just a case of trial and error basically. Keep trying, keep changing, keep modifying slightly until you're happy with a look that you want to go forwards with. Now I used wooden hatches there to create kind of like flower baskets for the main turret. And what I did was I expanded those, those hatches out to the side of the roof as well. But I would come back later and remove those. I'm also using that etched quartz that I talked about earlier that gives that panelled kind of effect with the wooden planks. And it's a really cool look. It looks great here. But one of the things I want to change about it is maybe the depth. I think I might sink it in slightly into the castle to make it look even more defined and chiselled. Now again, I came around the bottom of this side of the roof. Counted out a symmetrical shape. And because this place is going to need lighting, at night time, and also because glowstone in this texture pack is coloured really well. I decided to toy around with some detail on the side of here and add some glowstone blocks to light up the night and light up the walls. Now originally I used cobblestone walls as decoration here, and you see me here digging into the wall with just layers of upside down and normal way up stone bricks. And this keeps the wall one layer thick, one block thick but it adds a lot of detail in the form of like a, a slight chip into the wall. And also, like I said, when you, create, when, you, when you create something big, you have to add detail and definition to the long, plain sections of a building. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm adding ridges to this roof to give it a bit more definition and, um, and detail. And of course, making modifications here and there to the side of the wall. I think I remove those hatches decorate the uh, the flower box here with some flowers you see me putting in there, some nice yellow and gold flowers. And also adding in upside down stone brick stairs as decoration further down. And here we go, this is pretty much complete. But what I think I will do is around the wooden section near the top, I'm going to etch into the wall slightly and add a bit more depth. But that's pretty much a look that I'm happy with. I really like the way that the quartz contrasts against the stone brick in this texture pack. And now it's time to come around to the bottom. Now originally I built this out of stone double slabs for the flooring. And I'm going to need to remove that pink wool because it is a colourful look, but it is only there for decoration. So I came around, added some stone brick as walling. And if you look at the, uh, if you look at the building in the, in the actual movie, it's got a whole lot of pillars decorating around the bottom edge of the building. So I need to be sure that I finish up those and add a layer inside it that is the structural wall of the building, the castle itself. So I'm using etched stone bricks here as pillars. And once I had a decoration I was happy with. And some pillar supports to give it even more definition. I literally copy and pasted it around the rest of the pillars and trimmed up here and there where doing that left me a few rogue blocks. But I'm pretty happy with how it's looking so far. And again, what I'm only doing really is decorating one half of the castle. Because much in the same way that I copy and pasted the roof section, what I can do is to mirror the effect of this level of the castle, I can literally copy and paste again and have a symmetrical side along the other side. Now, I'm not going to keep it symmetrical. It's not totally symmetrical. But what copy and pasting the entire design from the left to the right does is it gives me a good base to work from. Now you see me here adding in some final detail around this side of the wall above, above the roof skirting with glowstone blocks, some iron fences there down the bottom, and then just showing you what it's going to look like with the stone, with the nether brick blocks changed to nether brick steps. 
adding glass panes into the main window here and making it just a bit larger. And of course, adding a flower box too, with some dirt blocks, some hatches, and some flowers. Oh, doesn't that look good? Now, I might be making this roof section a little bit bigger. The triangle here I might be expanding it, making it wider and taller, just because at the moment it looks a bit small for the size of a window I want it to be. But as night falls, you can see it looks pretty pretty. And now it's time to design, of course, this box here. Now, I imagine that whenever the uh, the royals want to address the nation, address the town of Arendelle, they'll come out onto this, this kind of podium here, stand out there and just, just greet their citizens with, with all the news of the day, or if there's been a wedding or a birth or something, they'll announce that right from this platform here. So this is just literally a stone box that reaches out from the roof section of Arendelle. Ah, oh, and there we go. We're coming to the end of this, of this new episode of Let's Build Arendelle. We've created pretty much half of the castle now. We know exactly what the pattern is we're going to go forwards with on the other side. We've created the large window here around the front and pretty much completed this side of the castle. There's a few changes we need to make. We need to chisel in deeper, add some definition and detail to it. And we need to copy this pillar effect and maybe add a bit more detail as well into the inside wall there as well. And copy and paste that obviously over to the other side and get rid of all this colorful wall that looks great, but it's not quite the design we're looking for. So I've been Stin, and this has been Let's Build Arendelle. We're back in the back in the castle now. We're getting back to, to crafting ourselves a cool looking Disney Arendelle castle. But I've been Stin. Hit like and favorite and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time for some more Let's Build. Take care.